Coffee and the Iron Lungs with their single Back with the Gang off their latest album, Real One, which was released a week ago today. The Toronto-based powerhouse have been tearing up stages across North America with the likes of Fiddler, The Dirty Nell, Frank Turner, and Billy Joe Armstrong's The Long Shot, as well as many, many other great bands. Uh, Real One is the band's third full-length album, and while the first two were already great, this one is simply better. Uh, the band have all matured as musicians, the sound is fuller and richer, and they really managed to capture that live energy you get when you watch them at any one of their shows. Sam and I talk about all kinds of stuff, including the band's D&D sessions, which you can catch every Wednesday at 7pm Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Their handle is Coffee and Lungs. We talk about the new record, of course, and how they managed to achieve the sound they got, uh, as well as talking about Toronto because Sam's from Toronto so we talk about some of his favorite spots in the city. Here's my chat with Sam of Sam Coffee and the Iron Lungs. Hello. Hey Sam how's it going man? Good man how are you doing? Can't complain man I uh I just moved like a week ago and just finished unpacking so slowly getting the new place in order. Hey, nice. Yeah. Where'd you move? Uh, I am in uh, Cabbage Town now, which is oh, nice. very new to me. I'm like not not used to the East End. Well, it's not really East End, but you know what I mean. I'm like not used to this part of town. So uh, Any, Anything east of Young Street is pretty East End to me because I'm yeah. a Duffin, so Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah I, was, uh, I was on Bathurst before, so like, yeah, it, it just seemed like so far away. <laughs> 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 Looks like you got a nice uh, like home recording set up, eh? Yeah, yeah, this is where I do pretty much all my work, all my. Well, it's not. We didn't record the album here, right? but I do all my demoing here and stuff now. I my girlfriend recently moved in back okay. in October, and okay. uh, we kind of redid this room, and I got to make a studio out of it. So I'm sick. Stuck. That's awesome. <laughs> Whereabouts on Dufferin are you? Uh, we are at uh, Dufferin College. So I've been here oh, for. Nice. I've always kind of been in Dundas West. I've been in Dundas West for the last like six or seven years, I think. Okay. But I've always like, yeah, I've, I've always lived around here and now I'm at uh, D- Dufferin College. I've been here for about five years now. Okay, cool. And uh, Reagan and I uh, have, you know, we've lived here for since November and uh, it's cool. We get to like redo the place our own kind of like the same situation, situation as you. Yeah, exactly. It's it's very exciting for sure. It's it's kind of weird when it's just like not girly shit, but you know, like there's just like definitely like a feminine presence <laughs> in the place now, and you're like, oh, okay, plants. All right, yeah. Didn't even think of that. <laughs> I, I, oh, plants! Uh, my life has opened up. I should show you my plants. Like I have a bunch in here now, and I love plants now. I never really got it, and I I totally get it now. Yeah, it's just nice like having like a living thing. You know, outside of like a pet or whatever, it's it's just not. I don't know. It definitely like does something. I just read an article on Reddit about um, just basically telling people like, hey, yo, you should if you're living alone, you should buy plants because like it, it just does something to like the human psyche. Just having yeah. having plant life around. So yeah, it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, Sam, man, thank you so much for uh, coming to chat with me today. You've been on my list for a while, so uh, this is like a milestone for me. I, I've been like a fan of the band for. A few years now and when when sarah sarah rubina reached out to me i was just like yes cool got him <laughs> thank you man thank you so much yeah. i'm stoked to be here thank you for the opportunity yeah dude uh how has uh how's the pandemic been going for like the band and uh personally uh the band it's it's been like really terrible for the band uh but, mm-hmm. <laughs> like we're still we're still trying to, f- we're figuring it all out yeah. because, you know, seemingly no one's really steering this ship correctly or no one really knows what to do. So we're, yeah. we're trying to figure that out because it's all new and exciting. Um, so, but it's still good for us. Cause like, I think we have something to do. Like we have the album to put out. So we're focusing on that. Yeah. And it's cool because like, we're trying to replace touring with making content and keeping fresh and just putting out new stuff all the time. Right. So it's keeping us busy for sure. And we're all like kind of scratching our heads, like, what do we do now? And then we figure out something and it sticks and then we keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Or like we now we play instead of band practice, because we're locked down, we can't do band practice. We're playing 
uh, Dungeons and Dragons on Twitch every Wednesday. Very cool. Like the band, yeah. the whole band's doing that. Yeah, the whole band, and we do it on Twitch live, so you can like come in and chat with us and stuff. And we're also trying to figure out. Like we're trying to f- we're trying to figure out other things too. Like we're trying to like just like figure out like how do we practice while you know we're locked down. Right, right. So we're trying to figure that out and keep like keep responsible, but also keep productive. And personally, it's it's I'm I've I think it's like it's obviously terrible, and I'm worried about all my friends who like who are being really affected by like sm- like small businesses are like yeah. being affected like big time, and so we're always trying to like buy from our friends more than we usually would for sure but for me personally since i have a job that's kind of like safe i i'm i'm personally doing pretty okay i'm 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 holding in i'm keeping busy i'm always finding ways to keep busy okay. and um it's good but i i really wish i could see my friends again for sure but uh yeah but, you know, oh absolutely reagan and i have like we, we have this project like the new apartment like we have lots to do so it's 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 really right it's, it's we're lucky but we we do really miss our friends and seeing our friends at bars and stuff and yeah it's it sucks it's it's it just it it just sucks for everybody it's it's not, yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> it definitely does how long has it been since the band's been in a room together so like March twenty twenty kind of thing <laughs> oh almost yeah like we when you know because when we when we look we're locked I think we practiced once or twice during the summer when we were like when we were a bit foolish and like just being like, oh screw it let's let's try and you know the numbers were kind of low and no one was really steering the ship and we we Mm -hmm. i regret practicing in the summer but i think we practiced in the summer a few times but we yeah it's been forever but it feels like we haven't been because we're always in constant communication on like the fb messenger thread and like you know we play D D every week and we're just like always like sending each other stuff and we're like you know working on songs we're working on demos and stuff so it if the connection is definitely still there and it's definitely still deep but yeah personally like i haven't seen any of i haven't seen anybody for oh <laughs> yeah man i've i've been i've been good i've been good i've been like yeah. i've i have literally just been you know I've, I've i've been really good about it and so i uh yeah i've I have, but I haven't seen those guys. I can't even, I don't even know the last time I saw them. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. I know that's like the pandemic has always been my first question on the podcast for everyone. And, uh, it's yeah. All across the board, same thing. It's been interesting talking to bands in Europe, specifically like bands from the UK. And they're just like, wow, like we had, we had a month or so where we could play shows again. And, uh, you know, wow. it, was, it was weird. It was weird for them, like not having been able to practice and then being like, cool, we have a show next week. Like we got to practice our asses off because we haven't, you know, we haven't been in a room together in months. And then just like to be put back into lockdown, then they had a little gap again. And it's uh, it's weird. Yeah. But Canada has definitely been strict all the way, which, you know, thank God. Thank God. Like, yeah, we got to be. But like and the paradigm is like the paradigm has like been continually shifting with music for like the past like 20 years. But like it's like. The, the amount that it's shifting for the actual musician more and like how they practice now and how they it's shifting so much more now like there's this these sites that have blown up recently called like jam kazam and jamulus where the, it, the okay. where it's super low latency the network connection speed is you have to be wired in but it's a low latency connection and you can actually jam like on a zoom thing with your buddies and we're we're oh that's cool we're kind of looking into that we're like but because we we we're very skeptical obviously and like because and we haven't really gotten a tour kit because you know the internet latency is with a band is like latency is very important when you're (laughs) playing music yeah and uh, especially with a band like you guys you have so many members six of us yeah we have six of us so it's like but the but the paradigm is just continually shifting and it's just like really interesting to see people like we've joined We've joined TikTok now, you know, like we, we we're like, oh, wow. yeah, we're 30, we're on TikTok. Oh, shoot. My, my mic is, my mic just dropped down. Um, we're, you know, we're 30 and we're on TikTok now and it's kind of like, because we have to be, it's, um, right. it's, uh, and it's not like we, you know, I'm, I'm having fun with it, but it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, we, for sure. we have to do something. We, we got to do something. We got to keep doing stuff. So it you know you, you draw inspiration from other people usually younger artists who have already figured this out long time right ago. long like the, yeah these yeah, these younger artists sure. are insane man the, the, the thing. it's it's nuts 
it's crazy too, like how many of uh, the young younger artists are breaking out because of TikTok. Like that's how they get big, yeah. and then then they're getting signed to whoever. Like it's uh, yeah, it's wild. Especially like yeah, if you're looking at like the SoundCloud rappers and and uh, like that kind of uh, genre. Like that's just where they thrive is on TikTok. Yeah, that's where like the really the future of music is like really lane, and like it's yeah. all like the kids have just like got it on lock, and it's insane to think of like how how much they've yeah it's it's like I, i'm i'm taking i'm taking serious notes <laughs> taking right, serious yeah. notes well yeah tell me about this uh tell me about the D D. like are you uh are you one of the characters are you the dungeon master like what's i'm the dungeon master i've been playing D D for master. i've been playing D D for about oh i've been playing for like maybe five years or so uh cool. and when the pandemic started, we had to like, we were figuring out like, what do we do to at least like stay connected and like stay right. Just like not even like, not even like put it out there, but just like, what do we do to like stay, you know, I, I miss you guys. So yeah. I, uh, yeah, yeah. So, we got to hang out and do something together somehow. Right? Yeah. So I, um, I went to, uh, so I started playing roll 20 with him on Twitch and, you know it's it's been a lot of fun like i I've, i'm running a campaign with them and uh they're having fun with it i'm having fun with it it's a great time we uh we do it every wednesday at 7 p.m cool all right man well now that i know that i'm tuning in for sure Sweet. thank you i had been playing DD. i got introduced to it i want to say probably about three four years ago a buddy of mine started a campaign and this guy was so like just above and beyond like he had like Every time we'd come back, he had music playing and he'd be like, last week. Oh. Like, and he like had it timed perfectly. So the crescendo of the music came and he's like, and now we're back. Like it was insane. And then the fucker moves to Halifax. <laughs> <laughs> and this was before like pre-pandemic. So we didn't even consider doing it over Zoom. We we're like, oh, it's over. Like we'll never see him again. But now I just talked to one of my buddies. I'm like, dude, why don't we... Why don't we do that again? We can totally do it. And so we're we're trying to get the ball rolling again. I miss it, man. I miss it so much. Check out Roll Twenty. Okay. It's really great for. It's so easy and it's okay, free cool. and it's it's really great for that Sweet. kind of stuff. Yeah. What kind of campaign are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing Fifth Edition, so it's Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, and uh, we're um, we're doing a bo- uh, like a, a pretty famous module called uh, the Lost Minds of Fandelver. So uh, okay. a famous dwarven merchant named Gundren Rockseeker uh, has uh, contacted uh, the players to uh, escort uh, a wagon of provisions he needs to deliver to uh, Fan- Fandalin, a small town okay. on the Tribor Trail, because uh, he's found something big. And uh, he oh. won't give you any more details about that. But basically it starts off and you're escorting a wagon down the Tribor Trail to a small town. And it's all theater of the mind. You, you like it, it, yeah, and, uh, absolutely. And it's uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. It's It's been great fun. That's sick. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's very cool. Like, as I mentioned, I was really stoked to be able to talk to you. Uh, I think I've actually met you. It was one of your shows. I think it was when you guys opened for Fiddler. And uh, after performing, ran back to the merch table. So that's, that's how I met you. I know Connor like oh, word. relatively well. I met Connor a handful of times and, uh, but I didn't know he was in your band. He, he was just like so modest about it. Right. And then he finally told me and I was, or he was behind the merch table. I was like, oh, you're doing merch. He's like, yeah, man, I'm the drummer. I'm like, what? <laughs> Connor's uh, the sweetest guy. He's the oh, best. Dude, yeah. I love that guy. I love that guy. Yeah. I was actually, I hit him up before this. I'm like, yo, give me some like insider scoop of like things to ask. And he mentioned D and D and you brought it up. So that's nice, very cool. yeah. I'd love to talk about the new album. Uh, I've had a chance to listen to the whole thing and it is, you should be so proud of it. It is Thank f- you. fucking awesome. Thank you, it, it sounds, it, obviously it's coming out in 2021, but it sounds like it's timeless. It could have come out in the seventies. It could have come out at any time. It could have come out like next to a Thin Lizzy album, which is something I, I also like was super stoked to hear. I've always thought this about you, but I hear it more in this, like you sound you sound a lot like like Phil Lynott. Like, oh man, I, yeah, thank I you. <laughs> hear it, and I was just like, oh shit, and uh, definitely like some really cool vibes. I got like a little bit of like cheap trick in there too, and uh, on a couple yeah. of the tracks. And I think to me, it feels like with the first two albums, 
which were good too. On this third one, it's like what you were trying to do with the first two albums, you've like totally achieved it on this third one. It like just sounds like mature, it sounds full. It's 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 great, man. It's great. You should be so proud of it. Thank you, man. Like I think it, you 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 got it right. Like I think it's kind of the perfect marriage between my first the, between our first and our second records. Like our first record Gates of Hell we did on our own and we mm -hmm. did kind of rough and tumble we did it in like joel's apartment we did it in the jam <laughs> hall we did it in dave's bedroom we did it in my bedroom uh and then the second record we got to do with alex bonenfant and it was the first time we were in a studio and alex really brought out like he showed up alex showed us how to be musicians and kind of brought us right. from here to here and right right it was in we, the, the amount we learned was like insane and and then we had and then we did some time with um rats and rats showed rats brought our skill levels from here like he, like he brought our skill levels up and then and then we uh took some time we were touring and stuff and we were had all these songs ready and we really wanted to do it our way we wanted it to like we wanted to use our own equipment we wanted to use um we wanted to sound a lot like uh, we love the White Reaper records, and mm -hmm. we hit up Kevin Ratterman, and he was like, "Who did those White Reaper records?" And he was like, "Yeah, I'll do it. This is great." And, and we were just like, "Whoa!" And it was, it was, uh, <laughs> we were really surprised and that he wanted to do it with us. And he, uh, so we we brought him out to Toronto to do it at Union Sound and Revolution Records, and we did it pretty fast. And like, I think, I think we did it in ten days at the studio which is wow. which is pretty quick which i think is yeah, pretty quick for sure but but like it shows that you know we've we've become better musicians we've become better better studio musicians better songwriters we've become um and we got we cranked out this record that i that i am proud of thank you very much i, I i'm very proud of this record and we got it out in you know 10 days and it's definitely the best thing i think we've ever done like i'm really proud of every song on it I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. There's been like a progression, a steady progression over the, the last three albums. And it's definitely like coming through, which is awesome. Tell me about working with Kevin. Uh, as you said, like you, you wanted him, you got him, uh, which was a big deal. But uh, what did what did Kevin bring to the table that maybe you hadn't even considered or his producing style? Was it like very hands on or we so before he came into the studio, we made sure we were prepared because our time with Alex, uh, with, with Bonifant and Rats, they kind of, it showed us that we needed to be prepped for the studio. So we were playing to a click, we were practicing to a click all the time, we were making sure all the parts worked and we kind of trimmed the fat a lot, or where we could, you know, we still have like seven minute long mm -hmm. songs, but we trimmed the fat where we yeah. could. And uh, <laughs> and then we, we came into the studio and we were so well rehearsed that all it took was just Kevin just like came in and was just like, all right, my dudes, like y'all are on it. And you just pressed record. And we played into your live room like that. And, and oh, that, wow. that was a really thing. Another thing that was important to us is we've, we've been, we've been often told that our live show is what we do best. Like our live show is, yeah. is something that is, that's, that it's something that we're really proud of. And we wanted to bring our live show, to re to the record so it was very important for us to play live as much as possible and right. Kevin just had the he just knew the studio really well knew the board really well and he knew he just like listened to the demos and he was just like yep yeah, go, go for it and then mi cool. mixing it was totally something like I I don't know how he mixed it because the mixing was just <laughs> probably insane because there was like by the end of it, there was like violins and, you know, three guitars on every song and it just yeah, yeah. mixing would have been hell, I'm sure. But he made it sound beautiful and old and vintage and modern. And like, I can't, I, uh, it would, it, he's definitely the one that made it sound so good. We're so proud of it and it wouldn't have came out without him for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize that he's in Wax Fang. I, I don't know them, but I'll check him out because Kevin is in this other he was in this other sweet, sweet band called Elliot, which were like, yeah, they were like a, I don't know if it was like a Midwest emo kind of, but like Richard basically knew who the, Richard plays bass in our band. He's like, he was an Elliot. And like, they were like a really sick, epic <laughs> emo band that he was the drummer for and recorded all their songs. And uh, Ke yeah, Kevin's been around, like he's, he's from Kentucky 
and uh, he's recorded for like My Morning Jacket and like you know yeah. like White Reaper. Yeah, he's and, got like, a very impressive roster yes. of uh, people he's worked with. We're really Andrew lucky. Bird, yeah, Strand of Oaks, like yeah, fucking awesome. Yeah, we're lucky. So okay, in your own words, how is this album different from the last two? Um, it's it. It's it's very different. It kind of with real one we wanted to express like kind of our range and how much we've grown as songwriters, but we still wanted to, you know, we've still kind of developed a style mm -hmm. in our own, but we wanted to really showcase our depth as well. Okay. So I think this record kind of showcases our depth. Um, there's different kinds of songs on it. There's slower songs. There's Definitely, you know, like the classic faster songs. Mm -hmm. There's like this, uh, uh, there's like big pop radio shiny jams on it, but there's also like songs that, you know, are really minimal. And uh, yeah, yeah. Some even think... like flirting with country a little bit. Tiny yeah, bit. dude. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, we really wanted to express. And that's something that we've always kind of done on all our records. We, all our songs kind of sound like uh, a mishmash, but somehow unmistakably us. Yeah. But Absolutely. this, but this, yeah. So this, so this record is that, but it's kind of more even. Like, whoa, we all did it, and like this, it's like, uh, <laughs> you can tell that we have support from like great people like Dine Alone because like mm -hmm. it's just like we were just like, can we make this kind of record? And they're just like, go and do it. Yeah. And yeah, and and we did it, and uh, they were really great about it. So we were super lucky to, uh, we were lucky. Right, right. Yeah, so so far fans have gotten to hear Gates of Heaven and Back with the Gang. So yeah, we're getting a taste of like the different styles. I mean, Gates of Heaven, super cool song. Back with the Gang, I, I really love too. Maybe could you, I know you're very proud of all of them and it's going to be a bit tough, but what would you say is your favorite, your favorite one off the new album? One, I have to pick one. <laughs> Give me a top three. Give me a top three. Give me a top three. Uh, a top top three is way better. Okay, I, I it's uh, Gates of Heaven. Uh, I I love Gates of Heaven. Um, it's uh, Run Angel, and it's a tie between uh, the song Fifteen Minutes of Fame and What the City Needs, which is coming up. Cool. Uh, which I'm really excited for. Yeah, yeah, I dig I, I dig all of those ones. I really liked uh, She Knows as well. That was a that was a good one too, man. Um, thank you, thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about the album cover on this? So the the album art was completely undertaken by uh, Liam, who plays guitar in the band, Dave, who plays keyboard in the band, and uh, Haley Alsacer, who's uh, a fashion designer and um, out of Toronto. Uh, she's she does amazing. She's like a very very good, very good established big fashion designer, mm -hmm. and she. Uh, uh, Dave, uh, their Dave and her are in a relationship, so we luckily were able to get her uh, to help us with the album cover because um, I can't speak for the band, but like I don't like it, it was a bit outside of our of our skill set. So okay. Dave and Liam dug right in, and they basically um, crystallized a guitar neck. Yeah and in, insane like so like liam and dave um literally like bought a bunch of chemicals and crystallized guitar neck <laughs> and then took all these like crystallized things that they that they made and brought them to Haley's studio and Haley and dave and liam set up this album uh like this pre these press photos and the the pictures they got were beautiful yeah. and uh this was this was our favorite one and uh it kind of what well, we wanted the main message behind the album mainly real one why we picked real one as the title track is because we wanted to express that like uh while we're kind of showcasing our range and wanted to make a production of it we still f thought felt that this record was really genuine mm -hmm. and we felt that that was kind of the main theme behind the record okay. is staying genuine and staying true yeah um because we, we were on the road a lot and we were kind of like figuring, we were trying to figure out like, what do we do for the next record? Like, how do we, you know, like we, we didn't know 
exactly where we fit in the grand scheme of things because sometimes we felt a bit too punk for rock and roll and sometimes we felt a little too rock and roll for punk okay because those are kind of like the main two genres that we fit in yeah so we were trying kind of we're trying to figure it out and we just figured that maybe just staying true to what we've done over the past years which is just doing what we want um is kind of maybe the best thing for us to do and it's certainly the best thing for us to do for this record because we're super proud of the outcome and we were lucky to have the support by dine alone and everything mm-hmm. for it so they we were lucky to have their trust on it and uh yeah it's uh that was like the main kind of theme to this record and uh Haley was so great at it and liam and richard or liam and dave did so much work they just did poured so much work into it it's yeah. insane yeah yeah it's definitely like it's a it's a labor of love which is which is Wonderful. It's just reminded me, it's just something you said where you said you wanted to stay true, like truth with being, being a, a big theme of this album. And I think that it's an interesting word that you use because like you said, you wanted to record live off the floors as much as possible and have it be as true to the live sound as possible, which I think I've always thought that about the band. I've uh, like on the other albums too, it, it definitely like has that vibe. It has that energy, but then this one even more so it just just encapsulated like what you can expect from a Sam Coffee and the Iron Lungs show that theme of uh, of being honest and being true really resonated with me because it it definitely comes across too and i think you nailed that and captured that live energy and feeling on on a studio album which is which is always great i mean it, nothing is worse than really falling in love with a band's album and then going and seeing them play live and you're like, oh, they don't sound anything like the album, you know? (laughs) Uh, So tell me, what what does it feel like putting an album out during a pandemic though? Like it's, you're not gonna be able to, you know, tour with it or uh, do anything like that. Is that scary? Is it? It was scary, yes. (laughs) But now we're kind of, now that we're, now that we've done it, we're kind of like, oh, sweet. We're like really excited again. Cool. We were terrified. We recorded this back in not last June or not last September, but the September before that. So September of 20 or of 2019, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, We had this recorded. So, or it was done by like November, 2019. Okay. So we had no idea, like that was like back, but when everything was great, mm-hmm. we had no idea this terrible, this terrible, terrible COVID was about to happen. So we were really nervous, obviously, but it's not like we were gonna sit on it because we, and we thought about that too. It's like, could we just sit on it and not do anything and just stay quiet for the mm-hmm. next little bit? But we would have completely lost all enthusiasm for it Absolutely. if that was the case. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and it was, it's kind of like, you know, we would have lost all enthusiasm for it. So we wanted to put it out as soon as we could. Um, and we put it out, you know, we, we were putting it out February, like in the, in the, in the thick of it, mm-hmm. but we wouldn't have it any other way. And, um, we do have to kind of shift like of what, like of how we can be successful with it. So what's been very, look, I've been just, I've just been watching artists that I like, that I like on social media. So like, I've been really, uh, Luna Lee from Toronto is like, I think every time I see one of her videos, I think she's like the best musician in Toronto. I think Mm -hmm. she's Yeah, she's incredible. Yeah, she's so good. Oh, everything, they, what can't, what can't that person play? Like what it's it they, like they play everything. So it's, um, so I started to try to do that kind of stuff. I, I've been, you know, just like we're putting out like little demos of originals every, weekly if I can, uh, which has been like, re- like hard, but it's like really good exercise mm-hmm. for songwriting and stuff and keeping fresh. And, you know, we've been doing like the D and D thing and we're trying to figure out live stream sh- concerts. Cause that's, one thing that I've always found underwhelming about the pandemic is is the live stream concerts. Yeah. I usually go, I'm usually on it for maybe a minute and then I close it, which sucks. I know I should be better at it and I know I should support the thing that I love the most, but I just maybe want to, f- if we're going to do it, I want it to be really good. Yeah, so properly. we're tra- absolutely. And, and like, not even like, even, so if we can't do it properly, can we do it every week? like right. you know like it, like it, can i how I, I need like we need to figure out things to 
do that keep us playing music like we just that's what we love to do we just want to keep playing music so like that's why i brought up like the whole like online practice because you know can i can i do that every week with the guys that'd be great because mm -hmm. then i could still play music every week um but yeah it's just trying to figure out where it all fits and how we get there and we're super lucky to have a team supporting it and uh we're we're very lucky to have a team supporting it because yeah. you know it, it'd be it'd be a mess otherwise. <laughs> yeah for sure for sure yeah i i definitely like agree with that sentiment with the uh the live streams it's so painful having to watch these live streams when it's literally just someone on their phone and it's like you're getting that audio from someone on their phone and like the videos videos one thing but like you know for music you want the audio to be as crisp as possible there's a huge gap in the market right now so for anyone out there like trying to figure this out like or if you know how like there's so many people needing this right now and you know i think for the next year or two that's just how concerts are going to have to be unfortunately unless you get a chance to travel out to the uk when they when they have a little bit of a gap <laughs> but um yeah yeah there's something something needs to happen to to do that and i think like a lot of people are working on it and uh, i've definitely seen some there was a there was a band that i interviewed and they had a very interesting live uh live setup that like maybe it wasn't like a perfect live stream it could have been like maybe a bit delayed or something so that they were they were mixing it at the same time but it, it felt like a recorded concert and it was it was very cool and like so it is possible but that costs money <laughs> and, yeah you know, exactly yeah and like that that's the the other thing so it's just something's gonna happen i think in the next uh in the next year it has to like music can't just die like it's not or live music can't just die it's just it's not allowed. No, and it, w <laughs> it won't. It won't. And we do have a trick up our sleeve for when the record's released. So we do have, you know, we do have definitely s some fun stuff planned. Yeah. Uh, but we're, but yeah, the key is just to figure out like, how can we do it all the time? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what we, Absolutely. That's what we love to do. For and sure. That, that's what, that's what, we, that's what we were trying to figure out before, before this too. So, right. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's fun to figure it out. And, uh, and it's also it's a no noggin scratcher for sure, but it's it's uh, it's definitely it's fun. Yeah, I love the fact that I'm talking to someone that's in a Toronto band because I get to ask questions about Toronto, which uh, which I love doing. It's uh, it's kind of weird when I don't know the town that someone's from, and I'm like, ah, I don't know what to ask you. But so <laughs> I call this the Toronto segment. What okay. is your favorite area in Toronto? Uh, it's probably Dundas West. I've been I've been living here for. Right. Like the, or um, I guess it's called uh, like, like the Dufferin Grove, Bloordale area. I live, I live two seconds away from Dufferin Mall. I okay. love it here. Oh, <laughs> the Duff Mall. The Dufferin Mall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Anywhere near the Dufferin Mall it, cool. it, it, it is great. Yeah, so, absolutely. yeah. I used to live up that side too. That's, uh, that's wicked. Yeah. Dufferin Mall. I love it. Just such a weird and wonderful place. It's a, it's like similar to how Gerard Square is in the East End. It's like that kind of that kind of vibe, but like just the strangest characters go there. Oh, <laughs> love it. What's the most Toronto thing that's ever happened to you? I saw Kevin O'Leary at a restaurant one time and his his kids were drinking wine. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm from Kitchener and I thought, well, you know, I'd probably never see that in Kitchener. This was, you know, shortly after I moved to Toronto. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, yeah. So that was like the, I was just like, wow, this is what a great city. <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, and then everything kind of just like, kind of just became normal. And I was just like, I got used to it, but that was the, I went to a nice restaurant. I think it was like Buka. Okay. To like, and then, um, and then, yeah, I saw Kevin O'Leary and he was, and his kids were <laughs> slurping back red wine. That's and I awesome. thought that was pretty great. Yeah. I hope I don't get, I hope I don't get murdered for saying that. <laughs> I, I mean, he was in a public place when that happened. I'm sure you were the only one that saw him. Unless he all those people are dead. For, <laughs> I don't know. He was he was asking for people to look. Yeah. He was look at me breaking the law. <laughs> I could buy this place. I don't care. Yeah, uh, he probably did. Yeah, yeah, it's probably his <laughs> restaurant. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite brewery in Toronto? 
Uh, Woodhouse. Woodhouse Brewery. Yeah. yeah Woodhouse Brewery, because it's right up on Lansdowne. Uh, That's also, right. uh, Amsterdam is a great brewery as well. Love Amsterdam. Uh, we have something fun planned for oh, them. Oh, okay. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Uh, what about favorite beer? Would it be Woodhouse or? <sighs> I do. You know what? My favorite beer, I do love Oast House. Oast House uh, Farmhouse Ale. Okay. They serve it at like Communist Daughter and they serve it at like the Federal. Okay. Uh, I love the Federal. I love going there. Um, well, I lo- I, when it was open, uh, but uh, it, uh, yeah, I love Oast House uh, Farmhouse Ale. That's my favorite. Okay, cool. Cool. I'll have to try that. I'm going to make a note of that right now. Uh, favorite restaurant? Uh, favorite restaurant would be the federal for sure. I, um, so the, the federal is a restaurant on Dundas West. Uh, it was really close to where I lived. So I, I asked, I asked them for a job while I was touring a lot and the food there's so good. It's like really like home style, like comfort food. And it's, cool. uh, it's just in a really nice room and it's, uh, the, the food there's so delicious. I love the federal. Sweet. Okay. Uh, favorite bar. Your bar is, um, I got like th- three. Okay, we can do that. Uh, so the communist daughter for sure. Yes. I love the communist daughter. Uh, Reagan and I used to go there all the time. Um, love the garrison. Yeah, uh, that's where that's where I. St- stay up till 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I love Garrison and I love uh, the horseshoe. I miss the horseshoe. Oh I miss those God. checkered floors so much. No, man. Yeah. Oh, I, re- I really miss the horseshoe. Yeah. I, I almost, I think like when there, there was a show that they did with like a very limited amount of people uh, during COVID. They're going to be doing some, li- like they did some really cool live streams with uh, the Sadies yeah. and the Low and stuff. Yeah, so, I, think it was yeah for, like I think it was for one of those. And they just had like a very small amount of people uh, being allowed to go there. I forget who it was I was supposed to go see. But uh, yeah, I, I wasn't able to go. And I, uh, yeah, they're, they're doing, that, that's an example of a place doing some cool live stream stuff. Yeah, for sure. Okay, this can be a two-part question now. So favorite venue, uh, one to perform in and one to spectate in. Uh, horseshoe in the garrison. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I spend a lot of the time at the garrison just cause I'm so close to it. Mm-hmm. And I just like know the people that work there and Sean who owns it is so great. And he's like, had us play there a bunch. And so I love playing there and I love watching a show there. I love watching a show there cause the room feel like they, the, the way they have the lights and everything is just like really sparkly disco lights. Yeah. And I just love that room so much. Um, but also the horseshoe, I love that room a lot. Yeah. That's like, just like, I remember the first time I played there and I remember the last time I played there and every single time I've played there is just, I just try to play as, like, I, I, I try to play as good as I can every night, but just playing the horseshoe is just a very special treat. Like, yeah. it's always, it's always very nice to play For the sure. horseshoe. Man, there's so much history in that room. Like, the, the yeah, people dude. that have been in there is just, like, yeah, it's, El- it's so special. Elvis and, like, George Jones played there. Yeah. It's, it's insane. I yeah, love the horseshoe. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. And now we are jumping into my music segment. So what uh, what artist or band has been helping you get through the pandemic? Um, there's this really great band that I discovered called Sue. It's S-A-U-L-T. Okay. Uh, they're, they're out of England and they do like, kind of like, um, they just do like very chill kind of like Krangbin style, cool. beautiful, like minimal R and B that is just like very, very good. And I love that. That's been my most recent favorite discovery is the band Sue. Okay. On that, how do you generally go about finding new music? I try to, so there's like different, it, it always changes all the time. I like, I, sometimes it's, it's friends. Usually the best way is like friends and friends reach out to you and be like, Hey, I think you'd like this. And mm-hmm. then they're usually right. Cause they know what I, what the, the kind of stuff that I listen to, but, uh, sometimes my taste changes so much. So I try to like seek out how other people are finding out about that stuff. And, um, some are just like p- playlist curators. There's, there's this really great 
radio station out of Boone, South Carolina called No Commute. Okay. Or the radio show is called that. And they're just, I think, No Commute on Instagram. And all the stuff they play is just fantastic. It's really great. Um, great representation of just like all genres and people. And uh, that's, that's, I love doing, I love listening to, I love finding out about music that way usually. Cool. Just through people usually. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's, it's funny how, how many uh, people I've interviewed just say Spotify and like, I, nothing against Spotify or Apple music, but it's nice when, yeah, when, when there's that like personal touch. Um, you know, some people even like, have, tell me they have one friend. It's like, anytime this person tells me to check out, a band or an artist i have to do it and they're always right so yeah it, that'll spotify helps with the algorithm which helps me find other stuff but mm. it's not it's never the same as like like the how i found out i found out about sue was uh goner records which is like one of the best record labels in like you know north america they they have a record store and they posted the record they're like hey these are great if you like minimal r b and uh I listened to it and I was just like, whoa, what the hell? And yeah. I like, that's, that's how I found out, found out about it. So like also record stores, which were like a great way to find out about new music. If yeah, record stores for sure. Too. Yeah, absolutely. I, man, I, that's something that I fell back in love with, especially getting vinyl. It just reminded me going to a record store, especially like one of the smaller ones. There's one in the East end, just up at Gerard and Bayview uh, called pop music. And the guy there is just the nicest guy and like anytime I go in there, I'll go in there like wanting, like I ordered a record that he had to like get in and uh, I'll go in there and he's like, oh man, if you like this, and then he gives me a list of 10 other bands that I've never heard of. And like, that's just such a, it's nicer having that like personal, personal touch from someone, you know? What, okay, so Sue, would you say Sue's your like latest and greatest find then? Cause that's, uh, yep. that's generally my next one, cool. And mm. uh, all right, then last one for this segment is, uh, who, who do you think I should uh, reach out to to have on the show next, in your opinion? Could be from Toronto, could be anywhere in the world, any, anyone you can think of. That would be down or is attainable. <laughs> um, I mean, I find Luna Lee incredibly interesting. Yeah. Uh, I have that, a connection someone with her now. So I, I just uh, I chatted with Mother Tongues. Uh, so the bass is from oh, great. And Mother Tongues, who's, yeah. who are incredible too. Like that. The Mother Tongues are amazing. Oh, and like, so the, oh man, that, 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 crew, that crew of musicians are incredible. Uh, but, but Luna Lee is like, like she's just, uh, she's just so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it's just like how, like, what a just like super super inspiring i think I, I just think she's she's really just amazing to listen to she's she's incredible cool i'm gonna i'm gonna work on that then <laughs> uh, <laughs> cool man uh so I, I think you kind of touched on it and i think there's a lot of secrecy about this but like what's uh what's next for the band like what what do you guys have planned for 2021 that you're allowed to talk about that we're allowed to talk about just like keep trying to uh like navigate uh the kind of this the the fog like just right. navigate through the fog of what's going on and just like trying to stay trying to just put out new stuff um if you know it all depends how long this lasts i would love to get started on the new record and mm -hmm. i'm always kind of working towards it so hopefully that um but also you know I'd love for people to hear this record. So we're trying to figure out ways to like, uh, to just put out like fun videos and stuff. For sure. And, uh, so it's, it's, it's a lot of like fun kind of creative work with the guys where we put our heads together, but like doing something fun or funny or like great. And, uh, but also just, you know, there's always new music to make. I just, I'm, I'm always excited about that. Yeah, for sure. Like how many demos are you sitting on right now? Um, like, of the ones that I like of ones that I want to use, like there's definitely eight that I'm like, that I'm good that I want on the next record for sure. So like, Wicked. there's definitely eight. Yeah. Like, like I'm like, but you know, like then we have to like, then we have to like, cause it's been a while. Right. So we have to flush them out with the, <laughs> right. we have to flush them out with the band and then we have to like figure out like there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff still, but uh, there's, there's eight songs that I'm, I'm pretty, that I'm really stoked on. That's cool, man. Oh, that's exciting. Thank you. Actually, also, I wanted to congratulate you uh, on getting getting played uh, getting played on Hockey Night on Saturday. Yo, that was that was yeah. exciting. Yeah, Connor uh, Connor made yeah. that big post, and uh, I heard it when when it happened too. Because uh, 
yeah, I, I was just watching the game and I was like, is that what? <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I thank you. That was like my my mom found out and she like told everybody in my family and it was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Ki- I'm from Kitchener, so it's like a big hockey town yeah. and uh it was uh, really celebratory to to be able to be a part of that and like thank you Sportsnet. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. All right, Sam, that's uh that's it for me, man. Thank you so much for taking the time again. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I can't wait to I can't wait till Wednesday. I'll uh, I'll definitely tune in and uh, chime in on the chats. Can't wait for all of this to be over so I can see you guys perform again. Yeah, we can't wait to be playing for the people. Uh, we love we love playing for the people. <laughs> all right, dude. You have a great day. Later, man. Thank you, Frankie. Cheers.